Hello, brethren. I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus, our soon coming King. I was requested today to speak on the topic fear. In the word, there's two forms of fear. Let's talk about the first one. The first form of fear is a healthy fear of reverence to God. Psalms 89 verse 7 says, God is greatly to be feared. And that's respected. That's honored. That's in a sense of, you know, somebody's greater than you. So you function in a better capacity in a different way. So that's a healthy form of fear. Without fear or reverence, we truly cannot serve God properly. And that's from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 28 to 29. Without fear and reverence, we cannot truly serve the Lord properly. If we meet a high status person, a celebrity, a president, we conduct ourselves in an orderly fashion. Certain things you wouldn't do, such as raise your voice or run or jolt, stuff like that, because you know you're in the presence of a president or a celebrity. So the likewise, the same manner, or even more so, we must respect and honor the Lord, fear the Lord, not in a sense of being afraid of God, but fearing him. We uphold ourselves in a certain manner, an orderly fashion. The same manner should be reciprocated to God. With all this being said, this is not the form of fear that we're going to be talking about today. The form of fear that I'm going to be bringing out is the unhealthy form of fear. Fear that comes from the enemy, the devil. It comes in ways of thoughts. When you think about fear, fear usually starts with, you know, an emotional feeling or a thought. And it just starts from there and it kind of springs out. But we know the devil, he comes and he puts lies in us. He'll drop a seed of lie. Fear is a liar by Zach Williams. Is a song that conveys the way the devil lies to God's people. The devil knows that a way to get people is by themselves. It's to get them to think. To get them to think of the worst possibility. And I love how this song places it or states it. It says, when he told you you're not good enough. When he told you you're not right. These are lies that the devil tells us. You're not strong enough. Put up a good fight. You're not worthy. You're not loved. You're not beautiful. Be, you're not, you'll never be enough. These are the lies that the devil will tell God's people. But if, And we know that words are powerful. The enemy knows that words are powerful. He may not just put that thought in your mind. He may have somebody that's not functioning under God. He may use them to drop the seed into you or say something because he knows the power of words. He uses them to chip at us, to break us down, to where that to to the point where we can't function. But Job is a great example. Job in the Bible, he beat all the odds. Job did not allow the words, the thoughts, the advice from his friends and family to get to him. Job was in a very low state. He had lost all he owned all his land, his servants, all his children, think about 10 to 12 kids had died in the span of days. And Job, he ventured to worship the Lord. After all that was done, he worshiped the Lord. He didn't curse God. His wife told him, advised him to curse God and die. And he did not listen to it. His, his skin had boils. He was in a low state. He couldn't eat. He was in a low, very nasty position where, I mean, we wouldn't want to be in. But he held on to his integrity. He held on to God. He knew his purpose. He knew that this was just a test. He knew that the devil was just trying to, is trying him. He knows that there's better coming right around the corner. There's a song that says, Joy comes in the morning. You may have a tough night. You may be going through hell. But if you just continue to hold on, there's going to be a turn. A turn for the better. 
For God hath not given you a spirit of fear. Timothy, in the book of 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, he says, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. A sound mind. Power, love, and a sound mind. A sound mind doesn't function in fear and timidity and, and anxiety and being anxious. But however, a lot of us, many of us, we all are going through a lot. A few things are the uncertainties of the future. We look at the media, we look at the news, and we see how the virus, we have not found a cure. They are recommending doses upon doses, booster upon booster. There's natural disasters going on. In California, they're experiencing fire. The fire is burning up tons of acres, tons of real estate. And we can't get a grip on it. Healthcare. You may think about what's the future healthcare going to be? Schooling. How is schooling going to be in the midst of COVID, in the midst of the virus? Shortages of supplies. You see restaurants saying, oh, we're out of this, we're out of that. The shortage on, on workers. There's wars. There's no longer rumors of wars. We're experiencing actual wars. Afghanistan is an example. Genocide the killing and the torturing of your own people. Where will it end? There's much more that's going on. We know where to bring our cares though. I miss all this, I miss all this chaos. There's still peace in the storm. We know where to turn. We know where to cast our cares. We know where to cast our burdens. And that's to God. The verse says, bring your altar, bring your cares to the altar. Leave them there. Leave them there. You don't have to carry the weight of the cares of this world. Carry the weight of the future. The Lord says in Matthew, give us this day our daily bread. This is the, in the prayer, the Lord's prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Worry about what's going on today. Because if you worry about too far down the line, one, it's not promised to us. And then that can really get you in a fearful mode, and we don't want to be in that position. Stand up and be strong. Another victory isn't stored. We have to stand on the beliefs that we know. We have to know that the Lord promised that these things will come. Perilous times will come. Perilous times are here. It's time to be courageous in the power of the Lord. The songwriter says, it's time to be courageous in the power of the Lord, not by our own strength, of our own, we're weak, we're frail. We don't know what to do. We see Peter, he was told by Jesus, you will deny me three times. Don't come. And Paul said, Peter said, I will not deny you. And we see that he clearly denied him three times of his own strength. He, he desired not to. He felt as if he would not deny Christ, that he would stand up, you know what I'm saying, and take Jesus' back. But it's not about what we have. It's about what the Lord is doing through us, the strength that he has, the power of the Lord. It's time to be courageous in the power of the Lord. David was a courageous man. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 8 and 9, Goliath calls out one of the Israelites to fight against him. He said, if one of you can come up against me and win, we will be your servants. We will serve you. And it took them days. They said in verse 11, it says they were dismayed, the people of Israel, and they were greatly afraid because Goliath was a giant man. It's kind of controversial. I think he was either six, nine to nine foot, but he was taller and more stronger and you know, he was a threat to the Israel people. But we see how David handled it. David, David didn't see the, him as a, a threat. David saw what he was doing, which was 
making fun of the people of Israel, God's people. And he's, he walks up to the scene and he says, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that defieth the armies of God? And Goliath, seeing this small, frail little youth, he began to laugh. And he asked, is this what you guys have to come up against me? Is this the best that you guys can do? Saul tells David, he counsels him, he says, you're but a youth. You're but a youth. You can't handle this giant. And we see that Saul was speaking out of fear. He was allowing his his flesh to speak. Because truly we saw what, that God, what God did. We saw that God came through. And he used David as that vessel. We see in verse 46, David expresses, he comes in the name of the Lord. He's like, you may see me in my small stature. You may see the youth in me. I may not have experience as some people in this army. But I'm not coming in my own strength. I'm coming in the strength of the Lord. And we see that David slays Goliath, the six foot nine giant, in an unorthodox way. Goliath says, David, do you think I'm a dog that you come with me with stones in the sling? But we see those the three or four stones or four or five stones that David picks up. And he slings it, and then he throws it at Goliath's head and knocks him out. It hits him right in the, the middle of the head, forehead, and it takes him out. Typically, that's, that's not a, a weapon of war. That's not a war tactic. But we see that God doesn't work in the ways that we work. God isn't limited to the, the methods and the resources that we have. But God also instructs us to be brave. Don't function in fear. When you function in fear, we're not being led by the Spirit of God. Because he says we shouldn't function in fear. We shouldn't uh, live in fear. We shouldn't do, make decisions out of fear. The songwriter says, you make me brave. You call me out in, onto the wave. We see that, see that Bra uh, Peter was brave. He stepped out of, the, out of the boat onto the water. And he wasn't sure that it was fully Jesus that was walking on the water. But he stepped out in faith. He stepped out in belief that it was Jesus. We will experience fear. There are some times that we'll be timid. Moses, when he saw the burning bush, he was a fearful when he was given the chore to go and deliver the people of Israel out of Egypt, he was afraid. He said, God, me? He said, I can't speak. I'm weak. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't have leader type uh, attributes. But God does not give us a spirit of fear, but a sound mind. We see after conversing with the Lord or with God, he builds up the faith and the courage to go about the task that God has given him. We have to remember that fear is a liar. Fear comes to break us down. Fear comes to make us function in a capacity that's not godly. But we need to know when we're functioning fear. We need to know the, the way fear comes at us. And then the times it comes at us. But we need to know that we have to call the devil out. And we have to remember that he has been defeated. Job knew that when he was going through the test of his life, the test of time. He, he knew that the devil had already been defeated. We got to call the devil out. And hold on to hope. Because without hope, we are already defeated. We have a hope in salvation. We have a hope in Christ that will take us to our expected end. So amidst the uncertainties, amidst loved ones passing, we have to hold on to hope and know that functioning in fear is not the way of the Lord. But I encourage you to be courageous in the power of the Lord, not in our own strength. 
Because of our souls, we are weak and we will fail as Peter did. But God, again, has not given us a spirit of fear. And he is able to finish what he has started in us. I hope that you are encouraged to hold on to hope and to be courageous for the Lord.